party people it's tony Rowe, and i'm back i hope everyone's doing okay it's been a while i know it's been it's been months and for that i apologize that's on me <laughs> um yeah I, what can i say uh truth be told i've been going through some personal stuff um and I'm not going to get into the details, sort of nunya biz, but uh, um, it has, I don't know, inadvertently it sort of messed up my zest for the game a little bit, and uh, I don't know, I was working a ton on chess, as is, and I think all, all of my you know personal stuff sort of coincided with just a general burnout. Um, I do a lot of chess, you know, I have my channel, and um, I'm studying, I'm always looking at something, or reading some book, or following all the the tournaments and such, and so it just sort of eventually became, you know, I, I always hit a, hit a wall and kind of need to take a break, and yeah, I think I, I just needed maybe a, a small break. I hope you guys can forgive me. Um... <laughs> I actually recorded a game last week. All right, so here's there's always this issue where it's like, can I go b4? b4, c takes, a takes, knight b4, bishop a3 is the idea, and if knight back to c6, there's like knight e4 hitting this thing, threatening this check. If he castles and I take it, I think I'm just better. If he goes knight f5, I think there's there g4 might even be a move, or e4 just hitting the knight. Oh, my knight's on e4, but I can go knight b5 instead, and on knight f5 go e4. That does give up this square, but I'm taking here check in that case. That seems dece. Uh, mo most people don't even take it honestly, but takes 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 bishop a3 and then knight e to c6. If I recall, there's maybe queen a4 in that position. Hitting the knight again, just threatening. Bishop takes b4. Um, and a5, actually, bishop takes b4 anyway. The knight can't take because of this pin, and the a pawn can't actually capture because of this pin. Uh, queen b6. Probably runs into you know, runs into something. I'm sure. There's also b4 and then like e4, but I think just knight g5. Taking here isn't a particularly large threat, I don't think, and his e pawn is loose. Um, I'm just gonna to, I'm just gonna go for it. Let's do this. I'm gonna risk it. My memory is somewhat shoddy in this variation. This is a good variation for black. It's solid. Um, you know, he can just castle here, and I think I pretty much have to play rook b1, and then we kind of reach a normal English, symmetrical English style position anyway. He doesn't really even have to contemplate a takes b4 if he doesn't want to. I actually don't have any threat. I mean, b5 or b takes c5 don't really do anything yet. After castles rook b1... Um, there is sort of a lingering idea that if he moves his light square bishop, b takes c5, d takes c5, discovers rook takes b7. Oh, he's going for it. Who's my opponent? Sorry, I have Zen mode on. Hunab Ku. Man with balls of big steel going for it. Oh my god, I played rook b1. I wasn't even thinking. What am I doing? Oh my lord! I, I just got done talking about Bishop A3. I, it was like a like a weird moment where I was talking about Rook B1. Ben, I, no! Oh, I'm so screwed now. All right, son of a bee sting! Oh my god! Oh no! I'm let. I completely let him off the hook. That is ugly. Holy crap! Is that ugly? I am immensely embarrassed. 
Oh my god. Well. Ew. Ew. I don't really even have a threat. I mean, you know, castles. And what the hell am I doing here? Oh my god. Unbelievable. <sighs> yeah, now I'm on tilt too. I mean, I I don't really have I have some compensation, not not enough. I'm I'm guessing. Um Jeez, I kind of have to hope for just some Straight up trickery. I can't believe I played Rook B1 there. That's really incredibly sad. All right. Well, at least now maybe I have Rook B7 takes and then Knight E4. That might that might give me some stuff. Knight E4 right away is also possible. Of course, Bishop C4, Knight takes D6 check would fork his stuff um, so that's nice other than that ugh, I'm disgusted with myself okay I shouldn't get I shouldn't get this this down what uh, what do I do here I have a lot of dynamic options. I can even consider d4, which might cause my opponent some unexpected problems. d4, e takes d4, knight b5 is my idea. And I'm hitting here, I'm hitting here, I'm kind of opening up the game. Man, eh, maybe I don't have to do that. That looks that looks pretty messy. Uh, Yeah, I kind of like my original idea of rook b7. Maybe uh, four right away. 94 right away. I think Castles is forced. Rook b7. Bishop c4. Knight d6. I think that's pretty much the same. Uh, yeah, probably something like Rook b7. Bishop c4. Knight e4. Castles. Knight takes d6. Bishop a6. Rook b1 is going to happen whether or not I start with this or with this. I don't see anything. Knight b5 doesn't really have any independent value. d4. Yeah, I don't really see the the, the benefit to doing that. e takes is likely to be similar to one of these moves, except that I'm just down, down a pawn, down another pawn. d3 looks slow doesn't seem consistent. I've been looking at this idea of knight g5, bishop c4, d3. Because his, his bishop doesn't really... Ah, he's got bishop a6 there. Damn. Yeah, that doesn't work. <laughs> that was a short-lived and totally unsuccessful idea. Knight g5, bishop c4, queen a4, bishop a6 there as well. Uh, it's so close to being something. Because bishop c6 is sort of looming. Uh, there's... That can't be an idea. Knight g5, bishop c4, rook b7. Because 
because I'm sort of threatening... Eh, what am I threatening? Queen a4 is sort of a threat, isn't it? No, is it? Knight g5, bishop c4, rook b7, let's say castles. Queen a4. Can't go here. Bishop a6 is no longer possible. These squares aren't possible. These squares aren't possible. Retreating. The idea is retreating just loses a bunch of stuff. Loses a piece. I can take here or I can just play bishop takes c6 and take here first. Protecting the this dude with d5 though. What happens in that case? d3. Right. That looks fairly good. Knight g5 like bishop c8 let's say. He can just he can just ignore everything and protect his b pawn maybe. I mean this is this is possible but is is this even worth considering talking about? <clears throat> Possibly not. <laughs> I don't see anything. I don't. I'm not sure. I. I mean, I basically have to play knight b5, or to keep to keep the initiative going. I pretty much have to. I'm down a pawn still. I can't forget that. I. I, I pretty much would have to go knight g5, bishop c8, knight b5, or knight g5, bishop c8, knight e4. I, I sort of tentatively like knight b5 in this case. It doesn't seem like blocking the b file is as big of a deal when the bishop is on c8. But maybe this knight wants to go to this e4 square. So like knight g5, bishop c8, knight b5. I mean, that's actually not bad. He can't really protect the pawn anymore. And he'd have to castle and I just get to take on d6. And then I'm hitting this thing again too. So something like knight g5, bishop c8, knight b5, castles, knight takes d6, maybe queen c7, protecting the pawn, getting ready for, like, rook f to d8. Uh, it feels like tactics are even sort of looming in that position, but maybe maybe I should just be happy to win the d6 pawn. And I'm thinking for way too long here. <laughs> knight g5 bishop c4 is important though rook b7 is my is my idea and the the point is i think that if he goes bishop a6 right away i have rook e7 check that's because don't forget with the knight on g5 this thing is open so so knight g5 bishop c8 rook b7 bishop a6 my idea with knight g5 bishop c4 rook b7 is that bishop a6 is not really possible because of this that's my problem in all the lines is bishop a6. But I think rook e7, queen e7, bishop c6 is obviously a massive blowout. So he has to take with a knight. And then uh, bishop takes a8, rook takes a8, and then uh, queen a4 is check and wins this bro. So it's pretty strong, actually. And I guess like knight g5, bishop c4, rook b7, bishop back to e6 right away. I just take, take, and rook e7 again. Or maybe just rook e7 right away. No, probably takes first. Takes here, and then rook e7. Uh, that's not as good, isn't it? Uh, but that, that all, th this is all kind of mood at this point. Those positions have to be good for me, right? All right, I'm going to go for it. This this move seems pretty compelling. Pretty cool example of um there are some kind of tenets of of candidate moves and move selection and calculation where you know a lot of strong players <coughs> will tell you excuse me I'm a little under the weather will tell you that uh, you always want to try and make moves that that you want to make work first even if they don't appear to work at first sight like sometimes like like you might immediately reject knight takes c5 because a bishop takes c4 but if you if you kind of look 
a little bit deeper, you might see that maybe it doesn't work. Maybe you have to move on to something else. But if knight g5 is a beneficial move in a lot of cases and you're having trouble in one line, for instance, you know, the, the two critical lines are here and here, and so I have to find a solution to both of those. And if, if this one ends up working after this, like, you know, you try d3, it doesn't work. You try queen a4, it doesn't work. Um, and you look at rook b7, it's like if, if you dig far enough into the lines, maybe you find some some idea then you've gotten away with having to play with 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 getting to play a much more active move than you would have if i was like okay i have to protect my c pawn before i play knight g5 like then there, there's another um calculation called tech technique called reciprocal thinking where you kind of try a line like for instance here and you see okay queen a4 immediately Knight g5, bishop c4, queen a4 doesn't work because of bishop a6. So then you go back and you go knight g5, bishop c4, what other moves do I have? And you try something else, maybe with a slightly uh, modified move order. So you go rook b7 first, and you notice that bishop a6 now doesn't work um, because of rook e7. And you notice that then queen a4 is much stronger because bishop a6 doesn't work. And so through like these revisions where you diagnose the problem with your line and you you go back and you try and either mix up the move order or find a new candidate you try and make make the line that you want work work so reciprocal thinking and you know always um trying to make the most active moves work first i mean you could claim that this is maybe making the most positionally desirable move work based on tactical grounds that's that's one way to put it too Sam Shanklin just did a DVD on that. Okay, so what did I say I was going to do if he castled? Queen a4, was that it? Yeah, queen a4 is just winning all kinds of stuff, isn't it? Ooh. Rook e7, king e7. Wow. This is getting real. I didn't see that move. Real talk. Um, okay, so rookie 7, knight e7, bishop a8, queen a8, uh, queen a4 check is, is similar to what we looked at before I pick up this bishop. There's rookie 7, king e7, which appears to be the critical line. And then what? Rook e7, king e7. One idea is just queen a4 anyway. And I'm hitting this and this. He can move the knight, though. Hmm. Oh, no, he can't. It's, uh, yeah, he can't. Hmm. I don't have enough time for this nonsense. I mean, I'm tempted to do this just because it keeps it keeps my initiative going and it also looks still pretty reasonable. Like having his king stuck on e7 is pretty bad. Um And I have a lot of potential ideas in in that position. Yeah, I mean, uh, hmm. I'm going to try it. I think my my tactical justification is queen a4, knight d4, bishop a8, and I think I'm coming out ahead there because queen a8, uh, queen c4 again. And so... Let's 
Let's hope. I mean, I think king takes queen a4 is going to give me long-term compensation anyway. Oh, he has d5. Yeah, d5, d3. Okay, I've already been there. Oh, but bishop a6 there. Eh, okay. I mean, no, he doesn't have d5. His king is on his diagonal. Okay, so I thought take here, and there's really not much left to talk about in this line. Oh, no. Queen a4 check. Yes, queen c6. Shit. <laughs> uh, so takes, takes. Queen c6. No. Ah, but I have check first. Again, move orders with tactics. And queen d7. I can just take on a8 right away. Woo! Woo! Calculation is fairly suck today. I'm kind of getting back into it. I need to start, you know, doing tactics problems again and doing hard calculation and playing longer-ish games like this. Um, I do have, I don't, did I finish that story? I've been kind of rambling. Um, I, I recorded a game last week and my mic was just all messed up. Like 20% of what I said probably got like doubled. There was like some weird like half a second delay echo on it. It was a nice game. It was an English game. English, uh, King's English, C4, E5, G3, um, etc. And it was, a, it was a pretty nice game, honestly. If, um, if people want me to upload it even with the mic suckiness i'll do that just let me know and and it'll be rapid game you know whatever this one is plus one so for for the people who want to see extra games if, if you'd like that game even in its uh somewhat crap condition then then let me know and i'll upload that one as well i mean i guess there's no harm in it other than the fact that i don't you know i don't know when you put out stuff that like you know is subpar it's like I don't want to have to deal with the people who like didn't watch this video or don't watch all of it, and then I upload the the next video, and in the comments you're like, "Your mic is screwed up." Don't you watch your videos before you post them? I'm like, eh, you know, I don't need that. Okay, so I'm up. Uh, I'm up a piece for a pawn. He's got an a pawn. I got a knight. Should probably castle. Just, uh, you know, maybe maybe king d7. That looks decent. He can take on e2, of course. It would get pretty hectic in that case. Taking on e2 might be his best bet. Takes rook e1, bishop b5, knight c3. This idiot goes somewhere, but I'm taking on d6, so that's kind of ugly. <clears throat> the only thing that's going to be irritating is, you know, if he takes on e2 and all my pawns are on one side, I have to find a way to pick off this a pawn. And yeah, I mean, winning, winning these pawns versus, you know, maybe these pawns, even up an extra piece is at least a little bit annoying with a bunch of crap on the board. It's like going to take a while. Interesting. All right. Well, I'm going to I'm going to do this and this deep pawn is looking precarious because at any moment I can snap here and then possibly take here. So he has to be a little bit careful. Bishop b5 knight c3 obviously with a double attack here and here. That would be very juicy. Bishop b3 Uh, yeah, I mean, maybe just knight c5 in that case. I don't like that it blocks this, but... I'll just, uh... Actually, bishop b3 is, looks awfully risky, doesn't it? Because these two squares are covered. He has to go here or here, and maybe I can trap it somehow. I don't know. Okay. Hitting this stuff again. Bishop d7. 
Probably I'll just take here. I like my bishop on a3 quite a bit more than I like his knight on e7. Doesn't make a lot of sense to trade it here and here. Especially because after something like bishop d7, knight d5, knight d5, bishop d5, it's like I'm hitting f7 and he can't castle, nor can he play rook f8. That would be extremely ugly. Man, the uh, champion showdown. It a lot of those games remind me of the last uh, non-increment blitz tournament I played. Complete shit show in the last twenty seconds, and the quality of the game goes from uh, high, or in my case, you know, like not terrible, to biggest piece of garbage on the planet. <laughs> People throwing pieces everywhere. Uh, you know, Magnus is flagging Ding like in dead loss, like queen down positions or something. It's like. I hope this is a one-off experiment. I really don't like it. I I, I do. I, it's kind of. I'm kind of conflicted because I think on one hand, no increment adds a lot of excitement, but on the other hand, like watching great players play like utter crap at the end of games because they have no time kind of ruins it for me. Like I would. Uh, I feel like there's got to be some kind of compromise there. Um, maybe just like a two-second delay or something sort of modest, but at least they can they can uh, make an actual chess move. That would be that would be awesome, I think. Okay, so my first thought is just to check him, and then go and then move it back. So I think I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that. Because king d8, knight d5, he can't castle for sure now. I'm threatening knight f7. Um, if he goes back, uh, you know, I'll just... Uh, maybe I can just move the knight somewhere else. That would be my plan. Uh, yeah, that seems very reasonable. I'm just going to arbitrarily stick stick my stuff on this square. Did I just run into bishop h6? Nah, I, d I doubt that's good. I'm just going to pretend like I totally knew what was going on. I totally saw that. Mort is sleeping under my desk. I almost went webcam today. I feel like I got to, you know, you guys want to see Morty more than probably you want to see me play chess. But uh, truth be told, I... I got home from work and I like took a shower and I have like bedhead and <laughs> wearing like a just to yeah I long story short I look like a slob all right rook c8 is that something rook c8 king c8 no I shouldn't even think about that this looks pretty pretty overwhelming in and of itself the quality of my minor pieces is quite good what up Bishop d6, king d7, kind of sort of trying to weave a waiting, mating net here, pal. Is it outrageous to go bishop b8? Uh, I'm going to go bishop b4, actually. Reason being is that I... I, I uh, Want to be able to preserve the the option of switching to this diagonal at some point. So rook c7, uh, king e6, rook e7 is mate. Rook c7, okay. And king d8, my idea was to go bishop a5. He doesn't like the thought of that. This looks uh, pretty bad, though, does it not? He's hitting this, and... Uh, it looks, yeah, okay, he just resigns. It looked pretty bad. <laughs> All right, let's take a quick look. Oh, I did it again. 
Uh, how do I? How do I? Uh, oh no, this is what I wanted to do. <laughs> All right. This is the game, by the way, that I'm I'm contemplating uploading. So if you if you look at this game and you're like, oh, this game looks pretty sweet, I'd like to hear what Tony has to say about it, then just let me know in the comments again. All right. So yeah, this line is uh, pretty good, actually. Uh, for black, this is the line I played for a long time, actually. But you do have to be a little bit careful with move orders here when you're black. As white, too. Um, a lot of times... Yeah, I mean, white has a lot of moves here. Y you can start going knight e1, knight to c2 first, and then either go, you know, uh, for the a3, rook b1 plan, or uh, you can try and... Uh, maneuver the knight to e3 and uh, install it into to uh, the d5 square. That's also possible. I like to go for this b4 sack, though, because I feel like... Uh, how do I switch this to one line? Oops, that's not what I wanted. <clears throat> um, got to figure out some kind of UI thing for this. It's I, I think this is not as good as somehow having them like a menu that up here or something i don't i don't know how i don't know i don't like that i have to click on this hamburger to to switch out crap related to this in any case uh i think it's pretty risky to take it i, I in general i would just go castles and i think white has to go rook b1 um and then i've always played sort of like bishop e6 d3 and then rook b8 and yeah, I think this is pretty pretty comfortable, honestly, for black. Who, who's ready at some point to go d5 and uh, you, you break in the center? And yeah, it's pretty comfortable. I mean, the the one of the problems with playing the English is that the symmetrical English is pretty good. I mean, if you look at knight f3 philosophically, one of the problems with not putting your pawn on d4 is that you allow black to go c5. Like, if you go d4, c5 allows white to gain space with d5. Um, whereas if you go knight f3 and black goes c5, then of course d4 is quite stupid at the moment, I think. So you, you, you sort of are compelled to go c4, but then white doesn't really have a greater share of the center than, than black does. I think against knight f3... Uh, of course, d5 is also quite good, and knight f6 is also good, but c5, I think, is also a very strong response to it. And th this is a position that you can reach through a ton of different move orders, the 1g3, 1 knight f3, 1 c4. Uh, this is a very, very well-known symmetrical English tabia. There are a lot of good moves here. Knight to f6 is perhaps the most natural move, just knight directly towards the center, etc. It does... Because black blocks this bishop in, it does allow d4, and then c takes d4, knight takes d4, uh, castles, castles, knight d4, queen d4, d6, and then um, I think, yeah, queen d3 is the main move. I sort of like going bishop g5 here, but uh, this is what people call the half Maroxy. I think it's about equal, um, but I, I sort of prefer white on a stylistic basis. e6 is probably... The most annoying move at least for me um planning to go knight g to e7 and d5 while still keeping this bishop uh the diagonal open i've experimented with a lot of moves here d4 is an interesting pawn sacrifice um yeah i have some ideas here i'll, I'll keep them in the bag but uh yeah it's, it suffices to say that that's an annoying line and then this uh Bodfinic system line the Bodfinic system being when black plays uh, c5, d5, c5, d6, e5, or when white plays c4, d3, e4, for instance. Um, this is a good line, just intending knight g d7, bishop e6, castles, eventually going d5. Sometimes white, or black, if, if white does not go a3, b4, can also go rook b8, a6, b5. Um... 8 takes b4, 9 takes b4. I'm an idiot here. I think taking is not very good, if I recall, but I can never remember the reason why. <laughs> but um, just like inexplicably, I go rook b1 here, and it's like, 
one of those things where in chess where you're calculating different things and especially when I'm streaming, I'm talking about different lines and I was just talking about rook b1 and just without thinking, I, w I just put my rook on b1 even though I was talking about going here. Yeah, and like I said, uh, this move and then I, I can go either here or here and he can't really defend anymore. Like if knight f5, then g4 and I, I get to snap on d6 with check which will pretty much end the game. <laughs> uh, and I, I believe if here, then queen a4. Point being that there's this pin and a5 doesn't work. Um, yeah, and there's this little trick. If knight a6, I think there's knight e5, yeah. This is a, a nice tactic. The idea is that uh, no matter which, black, of course, can't capture this way, but no matter which way he captures, I'm going to take on c6. And after b takes c6, queen takes c6, you can't simultaneously keep both of these things defended. Queen d7, moving the king, uh, both lose the rook on a8, and if you go here, it undefends the knight on a6. And white would be completely smashing here as well, because black can't castle. But, uh, no, you know, I played uh, this really suck move. But uh, knight, knight b to c6, now that I think about it, is, is sort of asking for it, because I, I kind of get a similar position with a very strong bishop on a3, and I I don't, black doesn't have to allow that. You can try and clog up the b-file with uh, all these dudes and, and see what happens. I think white retains good, like, long-term positional compensation. It's sort of like a weird Benko gambit. Like, um, yeah, knight e, e1 to c2 makes a lot of sense, like, trying to unclog the b-file. And now, you know, this bishop's good, this bishop is good, this rook is uh, very powerfully placed, like, my knight can come into the d5 square, so probably I have, like, pretty good compensation here anyway. Um, maybe, uh, so, like, rook b1 is not terrible, but, uh, I guess, not, not certainly, probably didn't justify, like, the massive freakout that I had for, for messing up my moves, but, uh, yeah, it's also, okay, so maybe just rook b7 right away was better, but, uh, I saw knight g5 and I wanted to try it. Um... Point being that now this this guy is sort of stranded out here a little bit loose to to this, and it's not it's not easy to find moves. Queen c8 I didn't look at at all. Rook e7, knight e7, check. Queen d7. Oh, what am I doing? I would have just been. Uh... Up a lot of stuff, huh? Yeah, takes here, and when he moves the rook, like rook c8, I take on f7, and he's just dead. <laughs> like, he's just getting killed. So he, he, he can't, uh... Oh, my God, and he, he has to, uh... He's just getting crushed here. Oh, my Lord. So this was, like, kind of horrific. Uh, a, a Sort of a, a huge miss on my part, right? Because this is this is quite a bit less precise. He gets to take here, and then he should have taken here, I think. And rookie one, like uh, I don't know, like let's say this move maybe, and takes here. It's obviously pretty bad for him still, but uh, maybe not as bad as it could have been. But a after this, the game is actually just over. I mean, there's there's nothing really to say. I don't, hmm, I sort of felt like maybe he should not put my bishop on this square for free, like maybe he should go, yeah, all this is really bad though, I mean, I was going to say this, but maybe takes takes in here or something, and he's just getting killed, so, um, yeah, it doesn't really, I mean, the, yeah, it, the, all the discussion's kind of moot at this point, it, it sort of went downhill at at bishop e6, I guess. I mean, that, that was sort of the end of the game, almost. It didn't feel like it at the time, because the lines were still kind of complicated. Maybe I should just go rook b7 immediately. Point being that bishop c4, now queen a4 is just uh, crushing. <laughs> Computer wants to go knight g5, that's funny. No, I think I would just go queen a4. That doesn't... Knight g5 would just be ridiculous there. Um... But yeah, okay, and if yeah, if, and if he can't take on c4, then 
like something like castles, even just being really lame with D3 is probably good enough for a pretty significant advantage for white. I mean, uh, maybe a, a stronger technical player than me would declare this like winning or close to winning. White has one very compact pawn chain. Black has two pawn islands. Both of white's bishops are extremely powerful. Um, this is a weakness. This is a weakness. Um, problems along the long diagonal. This rook on b7 is quite good. Um, d5 is a weakness. Knight b5 is dangerous. I mean, it, it, it's pretty hard to... It would be very hard to cope cope with this pressure. But uh, uh, I'm, I'm certainly capable of bungling it. And this knight, this rook e7 was pretty nice. Of course, not 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 particularly hard, and it was thematic in a lot of my calculations. But uh... all right. Well, in any case, uh, let me know if if you guys are interested in seeing the the somewhat Mike bungled video of my game versus uh, this guy. How do you even remember this handle? This cannot be a real name. Uh, anyway, let me know. Uh, let me know what you thought of the uh, the champion showdown as well. I'd like to hear people's opinions on the no ink and um, people being able to select their own opponents and uh, um, the slop and Wesley so bleeding on the clock. Dude needs a cut, man. Uh, all right, bye guys. Uh, I'm glad to be back. I hope you enjoy the video, and I will be back with more.